Well, let's go back to Kay uh, briefly, Faisal. She's got uh, a leader with her who's actually not resigning unusually. Kay. I'm guessing she isn't. I might ask her, Adam, during his last PMQs, David Cameron said his successor should retain a close relationship with the EU after Brexit, and that would be good for Scotland and all of the UK. He also listed the benefits that had come Scotland's way during his tenure, including almost 150,000 extra jobs, the building of the two biggest warships, and a Scotsman winning Wimbledon twice while he was PM. Yet the SNP's MPs declined to join the applause for Mr Cameron. Joining me is the party's leader, Nicola Sturgeon, who's also First Minister of Scotland. First of all, do you feel that your um, or SNP MPs behaved appropriately? Uh, of course. You know, there's a lot of anger in Scotland about the situation we find ourselves in, of facing exit from the EU against our will. And people feel David Cameron is responsible for that. But and yeah, apart from anything else, PMQs is about holding the government to, to account. But, you know, I have said previously, I say again today, notwithstanding our political differences, I wish him well for the future. You know, I, I've learned over the past couple of years how difficult leadership is. He's been Prime Minister for six years and I think he deserves our thanks for his service and I wish him and his family well in the future. Um, would you have applauded? Uh, I'm- when our MPs first came down here after the general election, they were given into trouble for applauding. Today they're being given into trouble it's not for my question. Not Would you applauding. have applauded? I'm not in the House of Commons. I, I don't feel right now uh, very much motivation to applaud uh, a Prime Minister who's put Scotland at the exit door of the European Union against our will. But that doesn't mean I don't wish him well in whatever he decides to do in the future. Clearly my focus now, as I think you would expect, is to seek to build a constructive relationship with the incoming Prime Minister. I hope to speak to her in the not too distant future and I'll be seeking commitments on a range of things but principally uh, and most immediately a full role for Scotland in the process that will now take place around the EU but involvement that allows us to examine all options for protecting Scotland's relationship with the EU because just as I might disagree but respect the fact that England and Wales voted to leave I hope the Prime Minister respects the fact that Scotland voted to remain in the EU and that's what I've got a duty now to try to bring about. And you want Scotland to remain in the EU no matter what Uh, what sort of um, reception did you receive when you went over recently? Uh, very positive. I, I think there is now a very wide uh, spread awareness in Europe of the fact that Scotland voted differently and that we aspire to a different outcome. And I got but a was warm... it much more than a photo opportunity at this stage? Uh, it well, can't be, can it? Well, we're at a very early stage of the process. I think the first priority is to make sure there is that understanding that Scotland is aspiring to a different outcome right now. There's hard work ahead. There's hard work ahead for Scotland to make sure that all options are explored in the context of the UK process but also to continue to take forward these discussions in Europe with both the institutions and with member states. So, you know, we face a lot of uncertainty and a lot of instability. We didn't choose to be in this position. As First Minister, I've got to try and navigate a path through this that best protects Scotland's interests. Okay, do you honestly think that Scotland can remit or join the EU? Even when England and Wales leave and Northern yeah, I Ireland. Think everything's possible in these uncharted uh, times that we live in. I, I'm not pretending that this route forward will be easy or that we won't face a lot of challenges, but I start from a fairly basic point of principle. Scotland voted to stay in the European Union. We did so not narrowly, but overwhelmingly. Every one of the 32 local authority areas in Scotland voted to remain. If I was simply shrugging my shoulders and saying it doesn't matter how Scotland voted, we're going to be taken out anyway, then I wouldn't really be doing my job as First Minister. So my job is to seek to find ways to give effect to how Scotland voted, and that's what I'm very focused but on doing. But your economy is not in a strong enough position, is it, to join the European Union at this stage? Well, Scotland's got a fundamentally strong economy. Uh, the UK... You say fundamentally strong, it's not strong enough at the moment, well, or it know, wouldn't be strong we're, enough. We're facing a situation in the UK where the economic prognosis is not particularly positive, where the UK, because of this decision, may end up going into recession. I hope that doesn't happen. But this is a, going to be a debate over these ne- this next period about how we best protect Scotland and how we best equip Scotland to continue the process of building and strengthening our economy. So these are issues that of course have challenges involved with them. But my point of principle to repeat this is to seek to work in the best interests of Scotland in a way that gives effect to how Scotland voted. And the best interest of Scotland would be to join the Euro? Uh, no, of course. I, I've never argued for us to join But if you Euro. want to be a member well, of the European well, Union, you would have the, to join the Euro, the, wouldn't the you, facts, as a new member? The, the facts show that's not the case. We've got, you know, Sweden is one example of a country that joined After the EU. After 2020, countries that joined the European Union have to well, I, I, uh, not, take on the well, Euro. We can argue that 
Sweden so is that joined, not the case? As Sweden far as joined opinion? the EU after the obligation to join the euro was in force, and Sweden, it is commonly accepted, will not join the euro unless it wants to. So I don't argue for euro membership, and I don't think euro membership it comes as a, a necessity of but EU why not, membership. Why not because, take the currency if you want to join a, the club? Look, we'll make decisions uh, about currency if, if we are in the position of being independent that are in the best interest of the country. But we shouldn't accept uh, positions that are inaccurate in terms of what would be required and what wouldn't be required. But these are discussions, of course, that are about protecting Scotland's best interests out of a situation that we didn't create and didn't choose to be in. Another referendum. Look, it's got, I've said since the morning after the referendum, of course that has to be one of the options that are on the table. You know, it's less than two years since Scotland voted to stay part of a UK that was part of the European Union. And in that referendum, uh, I'm sure we spoke about it at the time, EU membership was a big issue. The No campaign, politicians like David Cameron said that voting against independence was the only way to secure our EU membership. Now we find that our EU membership is on the line. So, you know, the circumstances that prevailed in 2014 have changed with the UK's decision to come out of the EU. So that has to be an option on the table. It's not my starting point. My starting point is how we best protect Scotland's interests. And so all options have to be on the table. And that's what I'm determined Why to make sure. Why do you still want, what, what is it about being a member of the European Union that so appeals to you and the people of Scotland? Well, access to a single market of 500 million people, the ability to collaborate with other independent countries to deal with the big global issues that independent countries can't deal with alone, access to research opportunities for our universities. You know, All those things already. can be negotiated, is well, what we're told. But why, Even if you why, remain Why with, take years and years and years to negotiate uh, outcomes that are second, third, fourth best when we have a situation right now where we have access to all of these things already so I want to protect what Scotland already has and as First Minister given that that's how people in Scotland voted I've got a duty to do that Final thought before we let you go, lots of people want to talk to you. Theresa May, um, she will be going down to the palace shortly, she will return about 6 o'clock to be uh, the next Prime Minister you are a very successful woman in a high profile job, but she is as well. What about your husband? How difficult does he find it um, being as supportive as he is to you? And do, do you think there are any, do you think it's different being a man to being a woman behind the throne? It, it's very different being a man to being a woman. I'm behind sure the throne. Look, you know, I, I, I find these, I don't know, I, I find, if I was a, a male politician, you, you probably wouldn't be standing here asking me about my wife and how she felt about it all. But, you know, he, you've asked me the question. My, my husband's hugely supportive, but he's got a job of his own that is a big responsibility that involves, you know, a lot of hard work in his part. And we've got a mutually supportive relationship, as I think most married couples do. Uh, but I'm the one that's chosen to be in frontline politics, not him. And therefore, you know, I'm the one that should be subject to the scrutiny that comes with that, not him. So I, I think... You you know, I think it's great. I, I disagree with Theresa May on many, many, many things, philosophically and practically. But I think it's great that we're seeing so many more women come into leadership positions. I hope she, uh, if I can say this uh, with humility, follows the example I set and appoints a gender balanced cabinet, get more women into government. And maybe when we've got a critical mass of women in these positions, we'll stop being in the position where people want to talk to us about our husbands rather than our policies. Looking forward to working with her? Uh, look, I, I've met Theresa a couple of times, I think, I don't know her well. We've got massive differences politically, but we've also got a duty, each of us, to represent and serve the people that elect us. And that, I think, demands from both of us a respect for each other's positions and a willingness to work together where we can. That's certainly the approach I will take. Uh, I hope and expect it's the approach she will take. And notwithstanding those differences, I hope we can develop a constructive working relationship. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Still to come in just a few moments' time here on Sky News, we are going to be taking you to Downing Street. The clock is ticking, about 20 minutes' time, and then Mr Cameron will be leaving that door for the very last time. Stay tuned.